That's better. I forgot to turn my red light on. You can't do a video without the red light. Come on. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Revo Point Metro X. Now, you guys know I'm not big on let's dive deep into the technical specifications, at least not in my videos. And I'm sure as hell not going to spend the next 15 minutes in the software showing you how to do this or that. At the end of the day, what you really want to know is if I buy one of these, does it help my 3D print business? Will it let me iterate faster? Can I bring products to market faster? And will it allow me to create products that don't even exist anywhere else? Well, today we're going to find out. So I'm not going to do a full-blown unboxing, but I think it is worth at least showing you what this comes in because this, sir, is no cardboard box. This is a very nice package. So you get the Metro X, you get a tripod and all the cabling you need. You get a calibration uh, piece here in the back, a bunch of dots, and you also get a turntable. Now this turntable actually will tilt and you can program this turntable to turn and tilt however you need. That way you can scan the product that you're trying to scan. I think it was just worth showing you at least what it looks like when it arrives because to be honest, I was pretty impressed. Now, all the reviews I've ever seen of these devices, they require like a supercomputer, right? So when I was going to install the software on my Core i5 3.7 gigahertz with just 32 gigs of RAM and an 8 gig 5700 XT, I was a little nervous. But I went ahead and run the PC performance check just to find out. Now, as it ran, I prepared myself for rejection. But when it gave me an average, just kind of a meh, hey, you know what? I'll take it. The first thing I wanted to do was something a little more organic. It's not something I normally do, but if you wanted to just scan something, take the scan from the software and put it directly in your 3D printer and print it, I needed to know if it could do that. Could we completely reverse engineer or clone something very easily? Now, I'm not going to say it came out perfect because mistakes were made and this was the first time I ever used this software. But I realized that this was a powerful, powerful tool. I was really surprised by the result. So after the scan, I threw it into my 3D printer and printed it. And the result was, well, another pumpkin that looks exactly like the other pumpkin. Now, I probably overly smoothed it and overly simplified it, but at the end of the day, you can see it came out just like the original. Now, now that I got that out of the way, let's get to the meat and potatoes of things. Let's talk about practical prints. I want to create a stand for my label printer. This is an item I could potentially market. But instead of measuring all the geometry of the base of the printer, how about I just scan it in and then use that geometry that I capture in Fusion to create my stand. Now, one of the issues you're going to have with Fusion is that Fusion doesn't know how to properly deal with a giant pile of triangles. So you can see this mesh body here, if I go into the mesh tools and go to modify and convert mesh, uh, you'll get a warning right away. It says, this model has more than 10,000 triangles and calculation will take a considerable amount of time. The interpretation to that is that it will lock your computer up forever. So how I resolved this issue was to only take as much as the geometry as required. So this scan was cut down to just the bottom section of the printer. That way I could use it and convert it into a solid body to cut against my geometry. And now when I bring in my geometry for my stand, I can do a direct cut, do a combined cut and cut away that geometry. And you see down in the history somewhere, where is it right? Do 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 right here. So we do the combined cut 
And now when I get rid of that printer body, unfortunately it does have that kind of triangular kind of look to it, but when it prints, it looks amazing. Now that brings up the next subject and that's accuracy. After you scan something, how accurate is that scan? Well, as you can see, this stand and this printer are joined together. The printer is not sitting on the stand. The printer is sitting in the stand. That's why I wanted that geometry. Now, Revo Point claims a 0 0.02 accuracy of the actual true value of the scanned item, and I believe it. Now, the specifications of this scanner read like an encyclopedia, and I'm just not going to go through every one of them. But I will put them up on the screen here, and feel free to pause anytime you like and check out all the specifications. Now, after my clients found out that I had a 3D scanner, they immediately put me to work. The guy that owns the local pack and ship place gave me a couple of old revolvers that he wanted scanned for an art project. He only needed one side done, but he wanted all the details. Now this is in cross lines mode set to black and as you can see, marker tracking is working just fine. It is a little bit older computer as we had stated in the beginning of the video and the frame rate isn't amazing because of that. Probably in the future, I'll use my M1 Max MacBook to do that scanning, but I just wanted you to see that you don't have to go out and buy a brand new computer just to start scanning. And you can see the result here is amazing. And this is just a short scan. I didn't really go into detail trying to hit everything. This was just as an example for this video. So after this testing period, what's my conclusion of the Metro X? Well, I think there isn't a conclusion to be completely honest with you. I think like many tools that I've purchased in the past, this is going to become something that is just part of my daily workflow. I'll always be looking at any job I have to do and say, do I measure that? or can I just scan it? In the aspect of business, if we look at just the possibility of just flat out cloning things, get something, scan it, produce an exact copy of it, and be able to use that. I mean, that's a no brainer. Organic models, easy. You don't even have to worry about fusion. You literally just scan it, clean it up in the Revo Point software and then send it to your printer. Done. That's easy. Now we look at producing unique parts, things that don't exist to fix problems. I was just amazed. With the printer, I was just absolutely inspired after I got done with that. It made me look at everything differently. If I can use that geometry, even if it's only as a reference, if I can just bring it into Fusion to just use it as a reference to create new geometry, that's a huge advantage, an absolutely huge advantage. And to be able to install it on a little bit older print or computer and it still work, I mean, I, I'm just kind of shocked to be completely honest with you. A lot of the things I get to review are fun. They're awesome. Yeah. But at the end of the day, when I look, walk away from something and say, this is something I'm going to be able to use in the future. This is something that will always be in the forefront of my mind when I think about producing new products for my small business. I really appreciate Revo Point sending the Metro X over for me to review. And I hope I was able to portray to you some of my findings and some of my thoughts about how we could use this for our businesses. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I didn't want to make it too long, but I definitely wanted to touch on some points that you'd be dealing with in your workflow, for sure. All right, guys, have a good one.